is up guys welcome back to overspray in today's video we are going to do a review of the 3m tr600 versaflow receiving a lot of different questions about 3M TR600 VersaFlow and I would thought I thought that it would be a good idea to finally do a proper review and uh, and really just talk about the features of the TR600 and not only that try to um, get a better idea of in a DIY setting is this kit really worth the money and a lot of you guys had a lot of questions and obviously we know that these TR600 kits are not very cheap. I gotta tell you, it's probably not gonna be for everyone, but I will say for those that are taking painting seriously, I think this kit is really, really uh, a good option because obviously you can't put a price on your personal health. And that is one main thing that I really uh, wanted to seek was um, obviously protect my personal health and so without further ado let's go ahead and review some of the meat uh, meat and potatoes of these uh, of this kit and uh, yeah let's talk about more about the TR600 all right so as many of you guys know I recently received this TR600 um, on a deal on offer up um, obviously, I didn't pay the full price for this kit, um, but you guys know that I have been using it for the past several months, and uh, I have really fallen in love with this kit. Um, obviously, it is everything that I've been looking for. Now, this wasn't originally my idea of what I was going to buy, right? And the reason being was the sheer price of this kit is just very expensive. Most of these kits can be found somewhere around the $1,200 to about $1,800, some even going up to $2,000. Now, that is going to shy away a lot of DIY painters that are painting in the garage, such as myself. And uh, for some professionals, uh, it might be uh, a hard choice to make, right? And like I, like I was saying, originally, the original idea was... Um, well, I, I just thought that VersaFlow was going to be out of my price range. And so I began to look at other kits. And one of the other kits that I was actually looking at was Hobby Air 2. Now, Hobby Air 2 has a separate uh, air motor or air pump, if you, will, if you will. And what I did like about that was that it was for a DIYer or a hobbyist painter and um, it did have its own little air supply. But the problem with that was that you cannot have the same air supply in the same room that you are painting or else it will damage the turbine pump. And the other problem with that was that you would have to run a very long hose um, in order for that hose to enter to your mask uh, for you to have fresh air. And the problem with that was, well, as you guys can see, I painted my garage and I often paint in my garage. And the last thing I wanted was to have more hoses on the floor and entangle up in, you know, in, in painting, right? I'm already dealing with an air hose uh, that I'm painting with, and now I have to deal with an air hose that I'm breathing out of, right? So that two and two together, it just didn't make sense for me. So I started to look at other options, right? And the other option that I was going to get was a SATA, a respirator kit and obviously then again it was also out of my price range but the benefit with that one was that it would run off of an airline 
But uh, then again, I'm also in a garage. I don't have the most largest air compressor. I have a 30 gallon air compressor and I figured that it wouldn't meet the demand that I would need in order to have breathable or fresh air um, out of my mask. Right, so I'm already dealing with one hose for painting, another hose for my respirator system. I just didn't see it feasible, and I didn't see that uh, it, you know the the compressor that I have is not going to meet that air requirement for two things that need air. Right, so then my last choice was going to be the 3M Versaflow, which is I have here, and I got to say this is probably the best kit. Um, it's almost like uh, it, it's cordless, right? It has a battery pack that powers the air motor. It's got a small hose that um, feeds into the to the helmet, and that's basically it. Um, it's got several different settings, uh, different filters. It can. It's very a versatile kit, right? And it could be used in different um, manufacturing process: pharmaceutical, medical, painting. You name it. It basically fits that criteria. Now there are going to be some differences in filter depending on what you are doing with your VersaFlow. So we're going to get into a couple more details about the kit up close and show you how it works and then also talk about some of the filters uh, as well. Alright all right, so let's go ahead and talk about the heart of the 3M VersaFlow, the air pump. Now the air pump is pretty unique if you will. It's got a lot of uh, information here on top. So let's go ahead and turn it on for you guys. It, it, it does make a, a couple beeps and it does do a kind of a self check if you will. If you guys could see the uh, lights blinking. And let's go ahead and give it a, a moment there. Kind of vibrates a little. And it, the display actually has a um, a battery life monitor. It also lets you know uh, at what speed the fan is. And then it also has somewhat of a uh, filter uh, warning system here. So as the filter gets uh, used up and starts to plug up here on, on the uh, top side, uh, it will notify you here. And we'll go ahead and demonstrate that real quick. So as you guys can see, there's a little bit of resistance there. And the pump is trying to compensate for it. And we'll see in just a moment the warning symbol come up. Give it one more mo moment. And there's the warning system right there. You can see that it, it blinks red. It will start to give you a not only an audible uh, warning, but it also it starts to vibrate and lets you know. And as the, uh, as the system is plugged, the motor will start to run itself down and uh, warning you that the filter needs to be changed. As soon as the, uh, the filter is changed, you can go ahead and press the power button once more and then go ahead and change the uh, fan speed as, as well. You do have uh, three settings for the uh, fan speed. You can see that there's uh, low, medium, and high. Now I did receive a couple questions as well about the battery. So there are multiple uh, batteries you can choose from as well, depending on the demand needed. Um, this one is just the standard battery, but they do make an extended battery that's probably about twice as long uh, or twice as big as the original. Um, what I do like about the standard battery though is it still does have quite a long uh, usage life or use life and it'll last you probably about a good three to four hours on a single charge. Um, I do recommend if you are a professional, probably have at least two batteries so you could switch between um, and, uh, and, and you know have a, uh, battery, have a battery. The battery also is pretty unique. Here on the bottom, you'll have a battery test uh, label here on, on the bottom and where you can actually test it and it'll actually display this one doesn't even work. Oh, there it goes. Uh, this one will actually display the uh, the battery life. As you guys, guys can see here, it lights up green, letting you know how charged the battery actually is. 
To, to insert the battery, it's very simple. You put it to an angle here, slide in, and you're ready to go. It does have a locking tab on the, on the, uh, on the right side where you can loosen it up and uh, remove it if you so choose. The filter is also here in this area right here. And this is actually a, the gray part is actually a cover. So if you guys like for me to remove it, there you go. This is the filter here on top. To remove the filter, you do have a little blue tab here on the side. And I'll go ahead and try to remove this one. Give me one second, there you go. So here is the filter and uh, the rest of the assembly as well. Like I said, to change the filter is very, very easy. Just grab another one, slide it in here at an angle, sort of like the battery, press down till it locks, and you're ready to go uh, for your next paint job or whatever it is that you're using this kit for. All right, let's go ahead and continue on with the two uh, second components here. So we do have a breathable hose. Uh, this hose is actually very durable. It does have sort of this uh, neoprene uh, material here on the hose. It seems to be very durable, but I did notice that a lot of the overspray likes to sit onto the hose. And so therefore I did put a plastic cover on. Um, it makes it easier to clean. And uh, yeah, it just seemed to be uh, much better. So one section of the hose t connects to the helmet. The other section will uh, attach to the motor. And let's go ahead and do that real quick. Very, very simple. You just uh, insert and twist, and we already have it uh, connected to the motor side. And to connect it to the helmet, uh, simply just push in till it clicks, and then you are ready to go. Um, and it just makes it for a very quick and very simple kit to use. And uh, well, let's go ahead and talk about the helmet since there's not much to talk about with the hose. And um, let's, uh, let's go ahead and continue on. All right, so the last component of the system is going to be the helmet or the respirator. Now they do have various different helmets depending on your needs and your application. Uh, this one seemed to be the best fitting for me and I wanted something that I was going to be able to paint with. Now there are some drawbacks and I'll get into that in just a little bit. But if you guys notice here on the front, you do have sort of this plastic uh, cover here in the front to, to protect the face shield. That is a replaceable part. You can buy more uh, plastic shields um, in order to protect your helmet. It keeps it from scratching. And uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of a nice little feature there, especially when you're painting. You don't want a bunch of overspray and clouding up your field of vision. Also, it's got a nice little rubber uh, seam here right up on top and making sure that it has a really good seal. On the bottom, if you guys can tell right here, it's got a nice little chin strap and uh, or chin cover. And I, what I do like about this is I'm able to uh, use this with my beard. I don't have to shave my face in order to get a good seal. This actually will cover and uh, those of you guys that paint with beards uh, will know that the challenge with some of the masks not sealing properly because of that, uh, because of having a beard. So you no, no longer will have an issue with that with this helmet. Uh, one of the drawbacks that I did want to mention, however, was a little bit of glare uh, in the helmet. So uh, I think that the glare might be more apparent uh, in a garage than you would see in uh, maybe in a spray booth, in a, in a professional spray booth. I did get a hold of a professional painter by the name of Rollo Customs, and he's also a YouTuber. I will leave the information of his channel in the description if you guys want to check out his channel. So I did get a professional's opinion. I asked him how was the glare on the helmet, and he mentioned that there was little to almost none uh, glare on the helmet. So there might be a differences between uh, a professional setting and a painting in a garage where you have very little lighting. There might be some glare issues uh, there, but like I said, um, I did reach out to him and he said that there was very little glare. I also asked him about the battery life on the motor. He did say that um, it did last him quite a few hours, probably around three or four hours, and he does have these standard battery. All right.
right, so in conclusion, what would I rate this kit from a one to 10? Um, I would probably rate it somewhere around an 8.5 uh, in a rating system, only because the price does uh, take away some points. Obviously, I am a DIY painter, and uh, well, I don't have a spray booth. I'm not a professional by any means, but I do paint on a regular basis. And I needed something that was going to protect me, and I felt like this would be the best kit out there. Um, it is quite expensive. You're talking about a range of somewhere between $1,200 to about $18 to $2,000 for a kit like this. And um, I did make some upgrades with my kit when I first got it. Now, I did receive this kit on OfferUp, and I walked out of there paying about $600 for this kit, but it didn't include the helmet, and it also did not include the hose. Um, so there was, it was an open box uh, item, and uh, I was able to kind of negotiate the price, and I did walk out of there paying $600. Bucks. But then again, I also had to upgrade the helmet to a, a better helmet because the one that did come with the unit uh, was not usable for painting. So I went ahead and sold that on eBay and bought this one. And with the difference um, of that and also purchasing the hose, I walked out paying a total or a grand total of about $800 for this kit. And if you ask me, that is well worth the money. Um, hands down, probably the best choice I have ever made for painting. And uh, yeah, I couldn't say um, many bad things about this because honestly, it's almost perfect. Where I don't see things perfect might be a more of a user error. When I first began to paint with this unit, um, I was spraying a waterborne base primer and I did not smell any fumes from the get-go. But as soon as I switched over to solvent base, this filter was inadequate. I was able to smell a lot of the paint fumes and a lot of the, the smells that you would normally smell uh, from body filler or paint. And this kit was, uh, the, this filter, excuse me, was not adequate. Um, this filter here is the TR6710N and I would not recommend this filter for painting. It does say, or it does mention, that you can use this filter for painting, but I would not do it unless you are spraying a waterborne base paint or in a spray booth, because honestly, this, this filter did not, it was not adequate in a garage setting. I ended up having to upgrade the filter, and I'll show that filter right now. All right, so this is the filter that I ended up having to upgrade. Uh, this is the TR6530N, and this is a uh, HEPA, right? This is a HEPA filter, and let me remove this uh, smaller filter here and kind of give you a, a little rundown of the difference in filtration. Let me put this aside. All right, so as you guys can tell, quite a difference in fil filters, right? You can see the thickness of it. And that's because this one is designed for organics and um, uh, let's see, uh, organics and solids as well as hydrocarbons, a bunch of other stuff. Um, it is a carbon uh, or charcoal activated uh, filter. So it does have a, um, it doesn't have this supreme extended life, if you will. It doesn't last forever. Eventually, it will need to be replaced, but you could tell the difference right then and there. Uh, the thickness of these filters is just, you know, it, it, it's very obvious uh, difference here. So, like I said, this filter was inadequate for me um, to paint in a garage. It might be for, for maybe uh, somebody painting in a house or something like that, uh, that type of paint, or maybe a waterborne based paint. This might be an adequate filter because I did check on the 3M website. And it did mention um, that this was adequate for painting, but uh, I would say that it's not adequate for solvent-based painting, maybe waterborne, but uh, don't quote me on that. I would say just go ahead and upgrade to this filter right here. This is the, once again, the TR6530N. Uh, this is the one I would recommend if you're going to be painting in a garage or uh, have this kit and you're gonna be a, uh, you know, painting all day. This is the filter that I would recommend um, because 
uh, yeah, you're, you're going to stay well protected with this filter. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the belt and the motor on the back side. As you guys can tell, it uh, sits on a little bit right above your butt, if you will. I uh, don't know how to, else to say it other than that, but a little bit over the waist there. And I would suggest if you are, um, if you do have this kit, I would say adjust the belt before you put it on. Um, because it is, one, once you get this belt on, uh, it is a little bit hard to adjust. I wish they would use kind of a different material. Um, this is, the strap is not actually a, um, it's kind of made like a, a, kind of like a rubberized plastic, if you will, maybe a butylene of some sort. Um, but uh, it does make it a little bit difficult to adjust. Uh, once it's adjusted though, it does feel fine. Um, with this bigger filter on the back, it is a little bit heavier. Um, feels almost like a heavy fanny pack, if you will, on your back side. Um, and let's go ahead and go ahead and get this thing set up. Oops, and there goes my helmet. Let's go ahead and get this thing set up so you guys can see. Try to give you a rear, rear view of how I get it on. Let's go ahead and put the, uh, the helmet on. One other additional thing I forgot to mention, I do like that the front face of the helmet opens up so you're able to close it up, open and close. Um, makes it really, really nice. And let's go ahead and fit it on like so. And go ahead and take our hose. Clicked and we're ready to go. Um, all we have to do is reach over, turn on the motor and we'll go ahead and do that just for the sake of this video. It starts to load up. You can feel the, uh, that fresh air start to build up inside the helmet. Um, it, and it's actually pretty cool. Um, it does keep you cool, so if it is in hotter weather, this thing is gonna keep you from uh, really sweating a lot, and uh, it does help quite tremendously. So let's go ahead and close this up. And this is what the complete, this is what the complete unit looks like. Now I'm gonna go ahead and bring you guys inside the helmet so you guys can kind of tell uh, a little bit of the glare that I see uh, with this helmet and that way you guys can get a better idea. Now, I don't think it's gonna be so much of an issue like Rollo did mention. Um, he has very little to no glare in his helmet. Um, but in my case, I do have a little bit more glare probably because my garage is a little bit dark and uh, I don't have that much lighting. So maybe the glare might be a little bit worse in a garage setting. And um, I, I think that's gonna present a problem if you go and spray, let's say a color like white. Um, it might present a little bit of a problem, uh, maybe even with some pearls or some metallics. Um, you're gonna have to really um, get in, you know, look at it from the side. So as you're painting, you're probably gonna have to look at it from the side and with that glare, it might throw you off a little bit. So, and that's why I kind of mentioned that it does have a little bit of glare on the front of the shield. It could be the shape, it could be just my lighting in general, um, but let me take you guys inside so you guys can take a look. Alrighty, so we are actually inside the helmet and I'm gonna go ahead and move the camera around and we're just going to go ahead and take a quick look around the garage and you, you guys can see as I move the helmet a little bit you can see a little bit of glare and uh, and all that so there is quite a bit of glare like I said like I did uh, mention it's it's not too drastic but it is a realistic um, bird's eye view of what it's like to wear this thing but you do see a little bit of glare here and there and, uh, and that's exactly uh, what I see inside the helmet. All right, so some final closing statements about the uh, TR600 VersaFlow by 3M. I gotta say guys, this is probably the best kit on the market. Um, I, I know a lot of you guys are DIYers that follow me. There's some pros on here as well. Honestly, I would say 
if you're looking and, and you're, you're really deciding on what the best kit is going to be, this is it, okay? There, there is no uh, going further than this. This is probably the best kit you can buy. Um, of course, budget is uh, something that uh, might be uh, an issue, right? Because a lot of people don't want to spend eighteen, two thousand dollars on a kit like this. Uh, maybe not even a thousand dollars, right? Um, in that case, maybe a half mask might be the best situation for you guys. Um, obviously, not everybody is going to have the budget for a kit like this. But I will say that due to COVID and all that kind of stuff. Once COVID is over, I'm pretty sure a lot of these kits are going to be uh, on the market, on the used market, and there might be some deals out there, okay? I have seen some on eBay going for around 700 bucks, 800 bucks, um, uh, and th this is on auction as well. So uh, as I mentioned this, uh, there are a couple there um, that, are, uh, that are on auction. So in the used market, you might be able to pick one of these up for a steal that's gonna be in the future. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Um, one other drawback that I would probably mention as a closing statement is the filters are quite expensive. Uh, a filter like this is probably gonna run you somewhere around 100, 110 bucks um, yeah, brand new, all right? You can use, you can look into the, um, on, on eBay and things of that nature uh, or those types of websites and you can sometimes pick some of these filters up for around 60 bucks, maybe 80 bucks or something like that. Um, and they do uh, come in a, uh, in a, in a package, right? Uh, they do also sell different packs of these as well. You could buy, I believe there's a five pack of this and it runs somewhere around five or $600 um, for a pack of, of these filters, right? So I will say that the filters are quite expensive. Um, so normally when I buy one, I'll buy it on eBay or somewhere where I could kind of negotiate the price a little bit. Um, if I do have to buy them new, uh, yeah, then th that's where the major drawback is. Um, like I said, I did mention something about the filter uh, being inadequate. So I do recommend if you're going to be using this for paint, for solvent-based paint, try to upgrade to this filter right here. This is the TR6530N. And uh, basically, it's uh, probably the best filter you can buy. It is a HEPA filter as well. Um, so that, that's my uh, closing statement with that. Honestly, guys, if you guys are looking for the best kit on the market, this is the best kit on the market, bar none. Um, I've looked, I've done my research, I've looked into other kits as well, and nothing really compares to this. The, um, the ergonomics of this kit the flexibility and the uh, maneuverability of this kit is bar none. Um, you're not going to get that with any other kit on the market unless you're talking um, something that you might find like on Alibaba or something like that where it's kind of a knockoff 3M kit. That might be a choice for you. Uh, but then again, uh, you know, they don't meet really any American standards or anything like that. So um, there might be, uh, yeah, there might be some legality issues. Um, as far as the TR600 used in a professional shop, um, I think you should be looking into either the TR, uh, I believe the TR800. So the difference between the TR800 and the TR600 is basically the same kit. Um, the only difference is the TR800 is uh, intrinsically safe, meaning it's not gonna create a spark if you are painting, uh, whereas the TR600 is not uh, intrinsically uh, safe. It could potentially uh, cause a spark and um, I have no issues with that okay it's not like I can pick and choose what kit I was going to buy um, if I would have had a choice yeah I would have picked uh, picked up a TR800 but I really didn't have that that uh, issue and in, in that um, that offered to me right so I really had no choice the TR600 does plenty you can use this kit for a, a variety of things uh, grinding priming, painting, uh, medical, pharmaceutical, all sorts of maybe gaseous, hazardous uh, environments, all sorts of it, you name it, this kit can do it all. Um, and with that said, I think this is the best kit on the market, bar none. So anyway, guys, that is all from me. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Stay spraying, and we'll catch you guys on the next one.